train more world champs than anyone else in boxing history. And I haven't stepped into a ring for more than a decade. In 66 seconds, Roberto Duran changed my life. I want you to meet the best trainer in the history of boxing, Ray Arcel. I don't need no advice from America. I know. He grew up in the streets, fought everything, hating everybody. He's wild. You can help him, Ray. You can make him a champ. Slow down. Then go. You can and no caprende. Turn the right hand over. Go, 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 go. Duran should fight no one but me. I don't lose. You put God in the ring, and I will beat him. And now, Sugar Ray landed. He's running in circles around you. my life. I didn't have any food when I was a kid. I'm hungry. I don't want to be hungry anymore. No mas. He needs to come back. Roberto Duran, the man with the hands of stone. We are in for a serious fight. That's it. That's it. Thanks, everybody. Edgar, thanks so much for being here. Congratulations. Thank on, you so much. On this performance in this really great boxing movie. Wow, look at that. Look at it. Yeah, man. man. <laughs> you yeah, played... Name next to De Niro. Wow. De Niro and Nostra. Usher. Wow, incredible. Incredible. Thank you so much for being the here, guys. The cast in this huh? movie is amazing. You have Ellen Barkin in the film. Yeah, well. yeah. Anna so Armas in the film. Uh, Ruben Blades in the film. Uh, Torturo, John yep. Torturo is in the film, so yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a great when, company. When did you become a part of this? Because I feel like usually with movies like this, a biopic, the director yeah. or the producers kind of find the guy that they think is going to embody the person that they're trying to portray, the main character, this historical figure. So were you kind of the first to come on and then the cast was built around you? And how long had you sort of been working on your Roberto Duran? No, actually, actually, um, uh, Robert, uh, Robert Nero was attached already by the time uh, Jonathan Jakubovic, the director and, and writer of the film, uh, approached me with, with, with the idea. So um, uh, they, they, they had been working on it for quite a while before I got on board. Um, I remember it was after the night of the Critics', Critics Choice Awards in LA when we were um, nominated for Zero Dark Thirty, and it was right that afternoon that Jonathan called me up and said, man, I want to talk to you about a project. Um, the nearest attached, any interest? <laughs> and I said, and I said, of course, and it's about Roberto Duran, you know, the, 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 the most legendary Latin American boxer. And I said, right on, let's, let's sit down. He gave me the script and I fell in love immediately and here we are. Now you get a script for uh, a true story. I read that you were a journalism student, right? Yeah. Like initially a journalism yeah. student. And most journalists are people- I'm a journalist. You are a journalist. Yeah, 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 I graduated, yeah. So then, at, at that point, when you get a script that's based on a true story, how much digging do you end up doing on your own, or how much do you sort of leave it to the script? What becomes too much digging for you as an actor, and what for you is sort of the right point? Do you feel like you do more than most because you sort of have a journalism? Degree? Well, I mean, I do, have, I do have a journalistic approach to, to my characters. I tend to, to interview, as, I mean, in the case of Roberto Duran, someone who's still around and... and, and, and um, and whose you know, family and friends and people who know him are still around, then yes, I had the opportunity to be very journalistic about it and then talk to his wife, to him, to people who were close to him, people who, who worked with him, and also people on the street who had just had the, you know, the, 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 the public perception of, of, of his mythological element, because that's what he is. You know? There's something very mythological about, about boxers, and especially about Roberto Duran, who's you know, by far the most legendary Latin American boxer and one of the most uh, important boxers in the history of the sport. 
and and whose story is also very related to um, to the 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 identity of his own country, you know? So this movie, I think that um, uh, this movie really taps into the psychological aspects of the sport, you know, uh, more than just the, the, the physicality of it. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's something that really attracted me uh, to the project. This movie speaks about the strategy, how this, how boxing, how to fight, you, you, you win or you lose it in your head. And if you, and that's the near assessing the film. I mean, if you lose your head, you lose the most important part of your body. Um, being such a physical um, uh, art, you know, because it's more than a sport. So, um, and, and 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 also how Roberto accompanied his country, Panama, during some of the most turbulent moments of its history. So that's also part of the movie. And uh, and all those elements were very interesting. So I tried. Um, to 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 approach each one of each one of them, uh, interviewing people, just moving to Panama, talking to people, just walking on the streets, and just and just getting the feeling. Of, right. So yeah. much of the movie, and or so much of his character, is kind of based around this idea of here's a guy who is in many ways becoming famous from this American sport, or traditionally American sport. America is where he's going to build up his fame, but his country has a very con, uh, contemptuous relationship, or a sort of you know a tough relationship with America at the same time, which gives him a really conflicted relationship with the country and even the sport and himself as well. Which I, I thought was a really interesting place to go with the character in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I mean, that's that's. Um, um, that's one of the what, that's one of the most interesting things about the story and about the character is the irony of being um, of being an occupied country by a foreign power in this case the United States at the time uh, through the, the 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 Panama Canal and then being the son of a American Marine and a humble Panamanian woman uh, Roberto always somehow wanted to fight Americans in the in, in the ring I mean he he somehow wanted to fight. Uh, he wanted to fight the, the 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 enemy in the ring, and it's so interesting that that twist of fate that the only way for him to do it was to have an American trainer. Right. This is the role that Ro that Roberto that, that Roberto De Niro that Robert De Niro plays in the film. So so that's um, the, the the movie's filled with those um, like like mirror uh, situations. You know when when things uh, repeat themselves. In, in very you know in a, in, in, in a very interesting surprising way, um, he didn't have a father you know and then somehow he finds his father in Ray Arcel in, in Robert De Niro's character, uh, who happens also to be an American. So it's a very it's a it's a very interesting uh, twist there. One of the things that I loved about your performance and about the film that was unexpected to me was that as much as it is a love letter to Roberto Duran, it's also not. At, there are moments in the movie where I was like, this guy's an asshole. And he's having some serious, I mean, he's just having some serious ego problems within, yeah. the, within, within the story. And I don't think you see that that much in uh, typical biopics, in classic biopics. When Roberto saw the film and when you guys were talking to Roberto about the film, how open was he with you guys about those sort of personal inner conflicts that he was having at the sort of height of his fame? I mean, he was, he was as open as any other athlete with a, with a, I think the mystery is something very important for, for athletes in general, you know? So he revealed, he revealed certain things and certain things uh, he just gonna keep to himself forever. And I think that it was very, um, by the things that he didn't share with me, I think that he was revealing more about his personality and that really helped. I think that there's a, there's a genie in a bottle that every, that every fighter, every, you know, um, competitive, athlete every every actor every artist in general needs to protect you know so i that i understood and actually was very interesting for me to go around you know the things that he wasn't able or didn't want to share with me and um sorry what oh, no i was yeah. gonna say right it's like anyone telling a story when you hit a point in that story and you go what about this and they go i don't want to talk about that you go okay well that's the interesting thing i think that he will never say he will never say let's not talk about that i'm not going to talk about that he would go around right. you know he would go around and uh, and he he will never of course as, as as a fighter that he is he will never let himself be put against the ropes you know <laughs> so uh that was very that was very interesting as uh you know in 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 the process um uh the things that he didn't you know reveal to me and that's the mystery of boxing um for you i, I mean it's always fascinating when someone takes on the role of a boxer because it is a very very physical role and as much as you're sort of 
performing in the ring and it's choreography, you still have to do a lot yeah. to get there. What was the training like for you? No, the training was the, the training was was I mean it was hard, but it was great. I mean it was fun, but it was but but it was hard. I mean for me it was very um, for me it was very important to uh, I couldn't I couldn't start I couldn't even attempt to to uh, work on his mannerisms or on on his accent without having become a fighter myself. Because the thing is that there's a very specific state of mind of a boxer, and you cannot make that up. I mean, you cannot imagine it. You cannot just um, uh, uh, pretend. You have to live it. So that's why I moved to Panama. I trained. I needed to, I needed to feel the, the, the deprived, the, 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 the sacrifices. I needed to get as close as possible to all that pressure and all the physical pressure as well before I even start to build a character. So normally, I mean, I build characters from inside out. In this case, I needed the physical transformation before uh, I, I, I would start to work on the psychological aspects. So otherwise, it would, have been, it would have been impossible. How would you define the sort of Panamanian accent versus, uh, you're from Venezuela, sort of Venezuela. the Venezuelan. They're very similar. They're very similar. Um, uh, they're, um, they're very similar accents. So, and that was also, sometimes was a, was a, was a little um, played against it because they're so similar sometimes that you would fall into Venezuela in certain moments, you know, especially when, they're, when, when you get very emotional. But, uh, but I, got great, I got great coaches and, uh, and I spent enough time in Panama to, to, to feel confident about it. How'd you like Panama? I love it. Yeah. I love it. It's a great country. It's a great country and, uh, and, 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 and I think they're going to be very proud. Uh, <laughs> About this movie. Now you've perf you've you've played real characters before. You did. You played Carlos in the in the amazing miniseries by Olivia Asayas. Who I always pronounce his name wrong. I think is it yeah, Olivia Asayas? Yeah. 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 What's it like for you to take on uh, play a real character like that? Are you totally comfortable with taking on a biopic at this point, or is it still something that you have to weigh heavily in your head? Is there a difference for you in terms of how you weigh taking on that part? It is. It there's a difference. At the beginning of the process, because you, I mean, the, the research, I mean, you have to do a, 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 a different type of research um, uh, for, for biographical characters. But in the end, you are recreating a life that already exists or existed. So in the end, it's a recreation. I mean, we don't, I mean, as actors, you don't, you, you don't imitate. I mean, imitation is another form of entertainment. So it's about trying, you know, aspiring to capture the essence of that character, what makes that character specific and unique, and try to and hope for the best, that's what you do. So in the end, you are, you are recreating life, and that's what you do as well with a fictional character. So at the beginning of the process, the research is, um, is different, but when you are ready, I mean, when you're ready, uh, when you start to portray the character already, then, then it's, not, it's not that different. What were you trying to capture with Roberto Duran? Like after well, you met him, what were the things that going into the performance, you're like, these are the things about him that my performance has to capture. Well, I mean, he's the toughest badass that you can ever, <laughs> that you can ever, that you can ever meet, you can ever you know, uh, run across with the biggest heart. So it's precisely that contradiction that you were, that you were, that you were referring to earlier. Um, uh, the movie shows it. I mean, he, he's, not, he's not necessarily, we, we didn't want to tell a story about a likable character. We wanted to tell the story about an interesting character, about a character that is interesting, that is alive, that he has flaws and virtues. And, 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 and we present, or, or that's, what, that's what we aspire to, we present all of those contradictions without any gloss. And that's something that as an actor, you know, excites me a lot. That's what I look for. Um, well, it's one of those things when it comes to a boxing movie. If I'm watching a movie about a boxer, personally, I don't want to see a pious character because they are a boxer yeah. and what's so interesting about Roberto Duran is that he comes from the streets he came from fighting he came from nothing and then he makes millions of dollars fighting of course he's going to be a flawed person and I think that was sort of relieving of to see the film uh or to see the film sort of be okay with exploring a flawed person because usually with boxers you get kind of like he's doing it for the good cause yeah you know? exactly that's the thing you know that is I mean he's not a boring hero you know, I mean, there's a, the, the thing. There's something very immediate, very raw, very, very specific about boxing. I mean, you're literally fighting for your supper. 
I mean, we use the word, um, I've been fighting all my life I've, in, 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 a, in, a met, in a metaphorical way many times. I mean, so I've been fighting to get the role. I fought very hard to get the job. I fought very hard to buy my car. But, have, but these guys actually fight. Did I mean, they really, the they, I mean, they get punched times? in the face and they get punches, you know, and that is a whole different game. You know, that is a whole different um, a mindset, and that's, that brings me back to what I told you earlier, that for me it was very important to get as close as possible to that struggle. I mean, how does it feel to really submit your body to such an intense training, such an intense, you know, deprivation? Because the thing is that you, to be a boxer, to be efficient, you have to be probably um, 15 to 20 pounds, I mean, it's, it's below what you think your normal weight is in order to get, to have the speed, you know, to have the to, to be agile enough. So it's very it's very. Uh, I've never I've never thought so much about my weight as I did shooting this film because for, for for boxers weight is everything. I mean, if you don't make the weight, then you you won't be able to fight and you won't get any money and you will make a lot of people lose money as well. So it's a very serious thing. And I was shooting. Sorry, I was training, you know, in the in the in the you know in the in, in the less privileged areas in Panama because that's where Roberto Duran comes from. So for me, it was important to train in the real gym, you know, and where where people actually didn't know that I was an actor, they couldn't care less about that. So they treated me um, just as any other um, beginner. And, and 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 when you see these kids who come there, they train so hard because they really, if they don't train, if they don't do it, they're not gonna eat. They're not gonna be able to buy anything. They're not going to be able to provide for their families. So it's a, it's a very interesting thing. That's why I think these stories, boxing films, have become a genre um, um, uh, on, you know, on itself because it's, it's very epic. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a poor man's uh, sport. I mean, all you have is your bare hands, your strategy, your, 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 your focus, your, your mindset, and that's all you have. Um, and of course, you have to prepare your body to match that. But if you don't have that in your head, the body's not gonna, I mean, the body can just get you so far. Absolutely, I mean, so much of the movie is, becomes about Roberto's ability to kind of compartmentalize inside and outside of the ring, which is yeah. something that takes a lot of personal growth for anybody yeah. in any career path. Yeah. But imagine if your career is literally fighting people. Yeah. What it's gonna be like in your personal life when you walk out of that ring if you don't know how to not bring it with you. Well, and then, you, and then you're fighting someone. I mean, you, you, I mean you, let's say you prepare for a whole year or six months for a fight, and then I used to go, to, uh, Roberto would take me to, to fights in Panama. I mean, Panama has over little over 300, three, 3 million people, 3 million population, and they have 29, 29 world champions. So imagine the ratio. And uh, everybody knows about boxing. I mean, boxing is a huge thing. And then after having prepared and after having you know, trained for so long, I started to go to professional fights with him. And then one thing that caught my attention and actually was very revealing to me is you know watching the fighters, watching one fight after the other, and then one guy with a big belly, a person who had never lifted anything but a beer, saying, "Punch there, you moron, you pussy, do this, do that." It's like, dude, it's like it's, it's like it's like the audience sometimes becomes another opponent, and you have to keep yourself as a fighter in the zone and and just and just you know ignore and, and, and kind of like zoom out from these these other opponents and that and that is something that really that really moved me i mean that's part of the of the pressure that they have to deal with um every day because that's their job and uh and, and you have to deal with that and then and, 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 and then the, 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 then comes the fame and then the money and then the a lot the a lot of money when you when you've never had any you know so it, it can be very overwhelming Absolutely. I'm going to ask you one kind of a lighthearted question before I turn it over to the audience. There's been a oh, super intense. <laughs> there's been a fair amount of actors who've portrayed boxers before, Robert De Niro clearly being one of them. In the last few years, we've seen a number. If you could fight one boxer portrayed by an actor, who would it be? Or one actor that portrayed a, portrayed a boxer? Jake Gyllenhaal, Miles Teller, Robert De Niro, uh, Christian. I would, I, I would fight Walker. Robert. You'd fight Robert? Yeah, it's my friend. He's going to be nice. Robert you know? now or Robert then? <laughs> Fight Robert now. I think it'd be funny. No, you know, you know, you, you know what? I mean, he could, he could really, he could really sit me on my ass. You know, he could, <laughs> you know. I mean, he's a very strong, he's a very strong uh, and very well, you know, well kept uh, um, uh, seventy year old, seventy something. 
is already. Did you, sp- did you do any sparring? Not with Robert De Niro, but just in general while you were training? Did you spar oh, no, at sure, all? Oh, no, for sure. Yeah, yeah, the whole thing. The whole thing. Yeah, I mean, I had, I had the whole thing. And I had my trainer. I had my coach. I had... What were you thinking the first time you stepped into a ring to spar with someone? What was on, what was on your mind? What does, what does that feel like? I hope I don't get hit in the face. Because, <laughs> you know, this... this yeah, is, that's, that's the money know, maker. The money maker, you know? <laughs> so it's like, I don't want to hit... And also, and I think... And, and also, Roberto Duran was never... I mean, like, very, very seldom hit in the face. He was never hit in the face. Hmm. So it's funny because actually there was this other journalist I was talking to yesterday. He said, how does it feel to get punched in the face? And then I was never punched in the face. But just because it was very, Robert, I was punched every, everywhere else right. for sure. Because even if you choreographed very, very, you know, if, you, if you're very, very carefully, it's still, you know, I mean, you're going to get some punches. You're going to give some punches. That happens. It's part of the process. And actually learning how to box is part of the safety of the shoot, because you, then you can deflect certain, you know, un, unrequested punches. But, but yeah, it was the face. Like, actually, in the movie, the only, I mean, after training for over seven months, as pairing with real fighters, uh, uh, training in a real gym, and having six fights, approximately, in the film, countless uh, rehearsals, the only punch, big punch, that actually broke my nose and I had a little surgery here, was by an actress in the film. <laughs> so it was, and actually my wife in the film, Anna de Armas, I mean, she gave me such a punch, like, like, like such a punch in my, in, in, like in my forehead that I got a big, uh, how do you call this thing when this gets uh, like a, a bump? bump? Yeah, a yeah. Yeah, bump, yeah. And the other one was, um, was, was the actress who plays um, uh, uh, Usher's, Ray, Sugar Ray's um, wife, you know, in that scene, yeah. you know? Then she threw something at me and of course, I mean, it was, it, it was on purpose, but you know, it was the heat of the moment, and then I almost broke my nose. So the only <laughs> punches I got in a boxing film for which I trained for over a year were by women. What an <laughs> nice. irony. They're the best fighters. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, let's open it up to the audience for some questions. First question. Uh, hi, Edgar. Uh, first off, thanks for being here today. <clears throat> um, my question Pleasure. for you is, um, as an international actor, especially um, from a non-English speaking qu- country, um, what was the biggest challenge that you faced uh, breaking into acting in the United States? And how, what, what did you do to overcome that challenge? Well, it's been very, um, it's been very organic. Um, I, uh, I, I started working in Venezuela and then I, I started doing movies there and then some of those movies, you know, achieved certain level of success here, and that started to open doors, open doors for me here. It, it was a very uh, seamless process. I never saw it as a, as a, cha- I mean, as a challenge uh, bigger than just getting your first movie. I mean, one thing leads to another. Um, I think that I've had great opportunities here in the United States and in Hollywood. I, as you said, I mean, I work here, I work in, in Europe, I work also in, in Latin America, where I come from. Um, what, I've, what I've found so far is that uh, regardless of the infrastructure and how much money, you know, some productions have versus others, uh, I've been very lucky to work with amazingly creative people, and I've come to realize that, that movie making is a spirit that translates in every language. So when it comes down to working with your director and working with the actors, I really haven't found any difference between working in Latin America, working in, in, in Europe, or here in the US. Of course, when you leave the set and then you have a beautiful, a beautiful uh, uh, dressing room and versus other places where you have a chair <laughs> to sit, then, then you see the difference. But that's, but that's another thing, that's not, uh, that's not the, that's, that's not the essence of what of what you should. That's, that's not what you should put the focus on. Yeah, yeah. Next question. I guess you're an actor, right? Yeah. yeah exactly. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Kind of international. So Canadians are Canada. international. Canada. Canada. Kind of international. Ah, uh, yeah. It's true. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, but tell me about the Canadian visa, man. That's true. That's one of you know. That's one of the hardest visas. It's so complicated to get that visa. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, let's not piss the Canadians. Love you, Canada. <laughs> As do I. As Just do make I. it a little bit, you know, I'm, I'm a good, you know. Make it a little bit easier. I might have to leave coming this election. I might have to go to Canada. Next question. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't even tap into that. <laughs> Hi. 
thanks for coming. Hi, how are you? I'm just curious because you've done so many different types of characters from horror movies to boxing movies to action movies. How do you decide on these projects and how do you feel that like these are the roles for you and get into them because they're so diverse. Like there's no rhyme or reason from the Deliver Us From Evil to the Born movie to Yeah. <laughs> well there's rhyme or reason movie. from Born to Carlos, right? Aren't both of those supposed to be isn't the Born assassin that you played sort of loosely based yeah. on Carlos the Jackal? Yeah, there was a, there was a very there was a very funny t twist. Uh, you know, of life. The fact that that my character in Born Ultimatum, the name is Paz, but actually in the book, that character is supposed to be Carlos the Jackal. And then three, four years later, I ended up playing Carlos the Jackal. So that was, you know, it was interesting. Yeah, apparently it was, it was, in, the, it was in, the, in, in the cards. But um, very personal reasons. I mean, there's, there, there, you know, the same thing as when you when you meet people. With some people you connect, with some people you don't. Um, and then and then that's how that's how it, that's how it, it works for me. As um, you know, when when it comes down to choosing my characters, there's something that um, I don't know. I've said this before. There's a there's a there's a type of secret dance between actors and characters. We I haven't really figured out whether we look for them or they find find us. But there's some. It's it's just a connection. I need I, I I need to connect emotionally to a character, and regardless of the genre, as you said, I mean, regardless of the, I look for a contradiction for sure. The the only thing that I could that I could see as a as a line that connects, that I hope connects all my characters, is contradictions. You know, uh, because that's what I think defines us as as human beings. You know, I mean, we we hold darkness and we hold. A sure amount of light and a sure amount of, of, of darkness in ourselves. You know, I, I do believe a lot in that kind of like uh, emotional alchemy that we can hold all traits of the human experience and the human nature, but just in different proportions. So um, that that what connects my characters, I think. I mean, I need I need to find contradiction. I need to find flaws. Um, for example, when I did when I did Carlos, I I wanted to find the light. Because definitely he was a character that, that gravitated more towards darkness. And then when I play, let's say, someone like Simon Bolivar, you know, who's a hero, a mythological hero, is like the, is a, is the Latin American equivalent to George Washington. It was a movie that I did called Libertador. Um, in my country, and in many countries in Latin America, he's regarded as this hero, untouchable, perfect. I wanted to find the stains. And, uh, and with Duran, both the virtues and these things were right there. So there was, you know, it was that. That's the thing that he's so, he's so, com he's so complex as a, as a human being, as, as a character. And I think that Jonathan Jakubowicz, our writer and director, was very sensitive and very, very smart in capturing that all those flaws and all those um, uh, uh, all those shadows and all that happiness and all that sadness and show it, you know, in a very raw way without any gloss. But such a movie about to get where he gets at one point, you need ego. You need to be able to have that ego to fight. And then once you achieve that thing, you need to discover humility in some cases. And that's sort of, that was the arc of the film that I really love. And I don't think I've seen in a, in a sports movie that yeah, often. Yeah, but the thing, the thing is that, I mean, we're talking about athletes, you know? I mean, there's no half champion. Yeah. Either you're number one or you're not. And that I understand. I mean, that I understand. I mean, if you, if, for example, if you ask Roberto Duran, um, who's the... Who's the best fighter of your of, of your generation? He would say, "Well, first me, and then he starts to." <laughs> yeah, and actually, it doesn't really it doesn't really um, uh, 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 kind of like snap me anymore because w once you're in the ring and you know that it's you versus that guy, there's no there's no in betweens. Whether you win or you lose, there's no half way there. You know, um, uh, and 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 and, and they, yeah, and that's something that they really need to struggle with. I mean, how do you? How do you handle, how do you deal with, 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 with the sense of ego and also with the traps, you know, of ego? Um, the ego that how can you identify or differentiate the one that is going to help you to achieve what you've been, you know, literally fighting, fighting for all your life and the one that, is, that it might take everything away from you? The bad ego. I mean, how do you how do you reconcile those? That is the challenge. Well, there's no there's no bad ego when you're trying to will yourself to the That's top. That's the thing. But then once you reach the top, most of that ego becomes bad. A ego. burden. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. A burden. It, beca it becomes an obstacle, and it cannot actually be the reason 
to lose everything the good ego help you achieve. Yeah, right. and, that is, and that is precisely, um, it's like people are saying, you're the champion, you're, you're fighting for us, you're the champion, you're the best, you're the best, all the time, you know? Because actually, one thing that I also find very interesting about, about boxing, and I think that that's the mystery that it has, is that, is, that, is that we project all our fears, aspirations, or our frustrations, we project them, you know, to those two guys who are fighting, or, 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 or women who are fighting. You know, it's like, it's, it's like, it's like the, the, it's a very primal thing. Yeah. You know, and that's why you have people so fascinated about, about boxing, because in the end, it speaks a lot about, our, about ourselves, about the moment that we are in our life and what, and we wanna see these other people fighting our fights. So we project our fights in them. And, you know, and, and that's a lot of pressure. And Duran was sort of taking that projection on for a while as well. Yeah, of movie. course. Yeah. yeah, it's an incredible performance with some incredible boxing sequences and a dancing in the ring usher. Edgar, thank you so much for being here, man. Thank a you very much. You. Thank you. When can people see the movie? Uh, August 26th. August 26th. Yeah. In theaters? No, and I want to give a shout out to Usher. Usher was amazing in the yeah. film, playing Sugar Ray Leonard. He was fantastic. Usher's and, um, great. Yeah, he's yeah. really the best teammate that you, can, that, that, you, that you can ever have. And we worked very closely and very hard together. I mean, I love, we're rivals in movie, but we're brothers in life. I love you, man. Usher Raymond. He's, gonna, he's great in the film. August 26th, Hands of Stone. Edgar, thanks so much for being here, man. Thank you.